What's up guys, Houndish here, and today I wanted to talk about power leveling in the Forsaken expansion. So we're going to talk about new ways to get powerful gear on a weekly and potentially daily basis, items and materials that you should keep right now, and how they will directly affect your progression in Forsaken. I actually have a couple of tips which could prove to be pretty useful, especially when it comes to that super long XP grind. But this video will be more about the approach to power leveling and how to effectively use what you're saving right now, as opposed to how to prepare for Forsaken, which I think a lot of us have seen about a hundred times at this point. So we are going to go into detail about what to expect in the first couple of weeks, upgrading power below and above the soft cap, and the best ways that we know of to get you closer to that juicy endgame content. So if you guys do enjoy this video, a like below is very much appreciated. If you're new to the channel, feel free to hit subscribe if you want to see more D2 content going forward. But for now, let's get straight into it. In just a moment, I'm going to speak about power leveling, the various sources for powerful gear and ways to use them effectively. But something I wanted to mention first is a potentially really useful tip, something that you can prepare for right now in game. So what some folks have actually started doing is storing up the bounties that we can collect from Crucible and Vanguard. When you turn these bounties in, you do actually get experience points. Now, if you hold on to incomplete bounties, they do actually vanish. But right now, if they are completed, they actually stay in your inventory. So there's a chance that you could hold on to these and actually use them to get a potentially pretty vast amount of XP. And this XP is going to be really useful to get you from the current base character level of 30 up to 50, because that is going to be a little bit more of a grind. We don't know 100% that these bounties will stay in our inventories. Bungie haven't said that any of these will be taken away. So while it is a little bit of a gamble, if you did have, you know, a whole bunch of bounties stored up in here, it has the potential to cut down the XP grind quite considerably. And of course, the sooner you get there, the more content is going to open up in the game and the more power that you can potentially acquire. Something else to remember is fire team medallions. Definitely grab a few of these for when you're running through the story or indeed farming for XP. They don't grant an absolutely huge amount, but anything at this point is going to be pretty useful. Now though, let's talk about power leveling and everything we know about how it's going to work in Forsaken and how that can inform us of ways to potentially approach this. So I do think it is worth getting about as high as you can right now in terms of power level. Of course, with Solstice gear and the current prestige raid weapons, you can get to 400 power. And it's going to help a little bit because, of course, you'll be further along in that process. Also, power scaling works a little bit differently in Forsaken. So right now, if you complete a raid or a milestone, the power difference you see per drop will be very incremental, giving you a small boost in power level no matter what difficulty the activity is at. However, in Forsaken, you are going to be rewarded more for essentially being under leveled. The example that Bungie gave is if you manage to beat a raid while 40 power under the recommended level, you should expect to receive more potent rewards. So essentially, we should be receiving better drops if we complete an activity that we're a little bit under leveled on. And that is going to be useful if you're jumping into content that you are a little bit under leveled for. But on top of this, the game will also always reward some form of power boost when you complete a much easier activity that actually gets a powerful reward. So say you help your friends with an activity that you're actually 100 power levels above, you're always still going to get some kind of progress according to Bungie. And this is to help incentivize team play and helping friends with content that you've essentially already cleared. So it is worth knowing those couple of things about how powerful gear will change. But let's talk about going into Forsaken itself. When year two begins, we're actually going to be gearing up with blue gear once again. And for a while, you're probably going to want to keep wearing the blues or any new legendaries that you get dropped, as infusion costs are going to go up and it will require planetary materials as well. So it does make sense to wear the blue stuff for as long as possible during the power climb. We don't know exactly where the soft cap will be for power leveling. So just to point out, the soft cap is essentially the point where general gear that you're getting dropped will not be improving your power level. And that's where you move on to milestones and powerful gear rewards. It does seem likely that the soft cap for Forsaken is going to be, you know, around about 450 to 500, maybe 500. And once we get to that level, powerful gear will become the main source of power upgrades. This also means that it's best to try and avoid using milestones or powerful gear drops too early, because of course you will be using up your opportunities for much higher level gear when you still potentially have the opportunity to level up with the blue gear and things that you're getting dropped just 
just at a slower rate. So try and save any milestones, anything like that, till later in the week so that you don't miss out on bigger power boosts. But do bear in mind at the same time what Bungie said about powerful gear when you are underleveled. Now beyond the soft cap or whenever you decide to complete your kind of powerful milestones, things are going to get a little bit more interesting. So we're going to see powerful rewards and new objectives appear at different times in the week. So on Tuesday, of course, the weekly reset, the first set of milestones and activities will refresh, but there will also be other powerful reward milestones and activities which arrive on a cadence that we're not entirely certain of just yet. We do know that it's going to happen more than once a week. But powerful gear and the system around it is changing a little bit. So currently in Destiny 2, pretty much all of the powerful rewards come from milestones. In Forsaken though, we will see many powerful reward objectives and challenges actually appear on the director. So the milestones on the top left will be the most important once a week quests for every player. Once you clear these out, you'll be left with the yellow nodes hovering over planets or activities. And these are actually highlighting other reward opportunities. So if you click on Crucible, as Bungie have showed us right here, you can get more details on the challenge that's available. This one is to complete five matches in Crucible and it's a weekly challenge. So it looks like this one won't reset. However, others will reset more than once or new challenges will pop up, like I said. So it'll certainly be interesting. A couple of other things to mention regarding the power climb. Bungie said early on at E3 that you will be able to get powerful rewards from daily heroic story missions. So that's going to be one to look out for. We could see minor daily bumps to power or opportunities to get multiple powerful rewards in the heroic mission playlist throughout the week. And of course, this could be affected by the system change that grants better rewards when underleveled. On top of this, the strike playlist will also climb through different power levels. So the lowest playlist will be 300, but then you get 400 and 500. So those 4 and 500 playlists will also grant great rewards below the soft cap and above it. But of course, anything above the soft cap is likely to be challenges or milestones. Finally, there will also be a point where endgame content in Dreaming City becomes available. We don't know exactly when that is, but we do know that Dreaming City will have various weekly challenges, both in the raid, but also outside of the raid. Two big opportunities to look out for early on. If you get to the point where Dreaming City becomes available, there is firstly the Blind Well. This is a PvE court type activity that will have new rewards available. Although for that one, we will apparently have to get some kind of offerings to actually trigger the court. So that may not happen, you know, in the first day or so. Secondly, though, there will be a weekly ascendant challenge in the Dreaming City, which consists of platforming and combat puzzle encounters which eventually lead to some kind of powerful reward. This is also going to be part of the weekly cycle of content to power up. So as you clear other content, especially if you've cleared powerful milestones or challenges, especially in the first week, look out for Dreaming City access opening up. So that's what we know about power leveling, the opportunities to actually get powerful gear, where they're going to come from. Now, really briefly, how do the currencies you're saving up right now help and actually interact with this? Well, firstly, of course, like we said, storing bounties and fire team medallions, which we previously mentioned, that has the potential to be very useful. On top of this, XP ghost shells can be pretty good. So you can get some which grant you a bonus experience on certain planets. This might be very useful as well if you plan to use public events to level up quickly and get more experience points, which people often do. For tokens, Vanguard, Crucible and Gunsmith materials will still be available for us to use so we can use what we have right now. They will of course be a source of more powerful equipment until we hit the soft cap. But on top of this, they are a source for new weapons, armor with random rolls, mods and masterworks potentially. And you can also use your current planetary tokens to rank up with NPCs for pre soft cap power boosts, perks and mods once again. So those will be pretty useful too. But I definitely recommend using those a little bit later, give it a day or so, so that you can essentially benefit more from the currency that you're spending. On top of this, keep your current mods and break them down in year two. So a couple of times Bungie have said you will be able to break mods down inside of year two and get the currency that you need to purchase new mods. Of course, we do have mod components right now. Bungie haven't said that these will become obsolete or anything, but maybe there's going to be a new currency and that's why they're saying it. It's definitely worth holding onto your mods, then breaking them down in year two. Of course, planetary materials are required to infuse gear. So I really recommend that you wait to infuse at least the end of the first week 
Try to use materials on new gear with perks and mods as opposed to the older gear, unless there's something that you really want to use earlier on. Like I've said before, staying with the blues or new legendaries for as long as possible will absolutely cut a lot of those infusion costs. Then briefly we have exotic engrams. You almost certainly won't get new gear if you keep exotic engrams right now. There is a small chance that you could get more powerful drops though. Bungie said that exotics in Forsaken will always provide a power boost without fail. Now that may or may not apply to engrams that you get now and save. I would guess that they've been intelligent and kind of tried to avoid people being able to power level tons off this. So I'm kind of leaning towards the side of it's not going to be useful, but it's worth definitely mentioning it. You can get exotics from the keys from the Leviathan raid, so you could pick them up now, hold the exotic engrams. There's also the chance that you could use this after the DLC. Some folks are planning to get the Leviathan chest keys, actually fill their inventory up and try and get those chest keys into the postmaster in the hopes that they won't vanish going into the following weekly reset. If that's the case, they may be useful, but like I said, that bit is a definite gamble. Another one to mention, go grab some three of coins off Zer, especially if you've got the currency. Of course, three of coins are pretty crappy. We haven't noticed that much when we're actually using them, so they're quite possibly going to be completely useless. At the same time, if you have the currency for them, having a couple in the first few days definitely isn't going to hurt. As far as I'm concerned, you may as well try it out. Later on down the road though, as for Iron Banner, Rally and Trials tokens, they won't be useful immediately. Bungie have confirmed that Iron Banner tokens will be useful when it returns, so that's definitely huge if you've got some saved up, but the other currencies we're waiting to hear about. So there we go guys, I just wanted to break down what we know about power leveling changes. A few ways for you guys to try and think about it and approach things going in and some additional tips that I hadn't managed to break down in other videos. So I hope it has been useful. If you have any tips for other folks, definitely drop them in the comment section. We'd super appreciate that. If you have enjoyed this video though, a like is super appreciated down below guys. Let me know any of your thoughts. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit subscribe and turn on notifications if you want to keep up to date with Destiny 2 content. For now though, whatever you guys get up to, I hope you have an awesome day.